Let's talk about lines in 3D space. Just like in two dimensions, we can write an equation describing a line embedded in three-dimensional space. There are several different ways to go about this, resulting in different representations of a 3D line. We'll start with the so-called vector equation of a line. The vector equation form of a line is a lot like point-slope form for a 2D line. In point-slope, we defined a line given two pieces of information, a point on the line and the slope of the line. In three dimensions, we still need two pieces of information, a point R0 in 3D space that is on the line, along with a vector V that is parallel to the line which represents the direction the line goes in. The idea is, if we place the tail of the direction vector V at the point R0, its tip defines a second point on the line, colored blue here, and thus we can connect the dots to define a line through space. So that's the idea, but how do we go from this conceptual understanding to an actual equation? This is where it pays off to think of R0 as a vector instead of just a point, because this allows us to do arithmetic like adding and scaling. We can treat any point in space as being equivalent to a vector whose tail sits at the origin and whose tip touches the point in question. This gives us a handy way to express this blue point on the line. Since the R0 and V vectors are placed tip to tail, it means the blue point can be represented by the vector R0 plus V. Now, the thing to observe here is that the precise length of the green direction vector V doesn't actually matter in defining the line, as long as it's not zero length. If we make it longer, its tip will be in a different position, but it will still be at a point on the line. And the same thing happens if we make the V vector shorter. In fact, we can even flip the V vector over backwards and its tip still defines a point on the line. All this is to say that we can scale V by any factor we want and it still defines the same line, but gives us a different point on the line. We can characterize all of these different scaled versions of the V vector by multiplying it by a scalar, which we will call t. The bigger t is, the longer our t v vector is, and a negative t value means we have flipped the direction vector over backwards. Since any point on the line can be reached by scaling v by an appropriate value of t, we have found a formula that neatly describes all the points on the line, r0 plus t v. If we represent any such point on the line with a vector we'll call r, with no subscript, we arrive at the vector equation of a line, r equals r0 plus tv. One thing to get clear here is that although r0 and v are fixed vectors that define the shape of the line, the scalar t is actually a free wildcard for which you can plug in literally any real number. Note that changing the value of t doesn't change the line, it just changes which point on the line you are currently looking at. In this way, the vector equation form of a line is a lot like parametric equations for a line in 2D. In fact, it's exactly that, just packaged into the language of vectors. You can plug in any values you want in for t, and as you vary the value of t, you trace out the line in 3D space.